Are you sure you are here for your brother? Tia, Wan's best friend, gave her shoulder a nudge. Of course I am. She took a quick glance at her best friend and rolled her eyes witnessing the sight of a smock dancing on her lips. Then why are your eyes stuck on him, on your brother's best friend? Oh my, don't tell me you are in love with that cute guy Park Jamin. She cupped her cheeks, her eyes widening as a dramatic expression took over her features. Wan glared at her and smacked her head. Better focus on your own love story. Think about making my brother fall for you. She remarked and turned her focus back on ogling her long-time crush, Park Jamin. She heard the audience grunting in unison as the opponent team made a basket. The match was really important for the campus. If their team won, they would play basketball on national level. Wyatt had seen her brother, Min Yungi, being very serious about the game, as he should, being the leader of the team. He and Jermin were the ace players of the team. She was here to see Jermin playing, though she was less interested in the game. An intense silence settled in the court. Only the sound of ball hitting against the floor and shoes screeching on the tile surface can be heard. Both the team were at the same score. The last basket would decide the winner, the team who would get the golden opportunity to play in nationals. The audience had their breath stuck in their throat as the ball tossed between the opponent team members. Yungi's team supporters were barely containing themselves from jumping into into the court and made the basket like a pro, though they didn't even know the rudiments of basketball. A hope lit inside their heart when Yungi skillfully sneaked the ball from them. His opponent surrounded him, leaving no space for escaping. Seemingly, they were equally passionate to win the match. Yungi looked at Jemin, conversing through eyes. Getting a nod from him, he pressed the ball down at a certain angle. Thus, it bounced between the legs of one of the players. Jimin, who was already in the position, grabbed the ball and aimed it at the basket. The audience sat like a mannequin, without breathing or blinking, as if they would lose their life if they did so. The ball bounced against the edge of the basket, once, twice, thrice. Its amplitude of jump decreased, and it rolled at the edge before finally slipping into the basket. The silent court filled with chaos as the audience stood up and cheered for the win. Jamin cheered and ran to hug Yungi, which became a team hug as the other players joined as well. Amidst the happy cheers and greetings, many faces had the look of disappointment. They wanted their team to win. But sadly, winner can only be one. Min Yungi, take my heart. She went insane after their win. She climbed on her chair and started dancing. Wine had to hide her face to escape the looks people were giving her along with Tia. Goodness, Tia, get down. Tired with the second-hand embarrassment, she grabbed Tia's wrist and tugged at it in order to pull her down and avoid the unnecessary attention she had brought upon them. What? Girlie, let me dance. My husband won. Love you, Min Yungi. She yelled, wriggling in Wine's hold. Wine winced and pressed her palm on her mouth to stop her from embarrassing them, but too late. She had already gained a lot of attention along with Yungi, who turned his face in another direction. He was looking more sheepish than Wine. Tia, if you keep behaving like this, there is no way my brother is going to love you. He already avoids you lest he be started ghosting you, she said, expressing the possible aftermath of her reactions. But Tia being Tia shrugged her shoulder nonchalantly. Don't worry, girly. I assure you that I and only I will be your sister-in-law. I'll steal your brother's last name like he stole my heart. And not to forget, I'll give you a bunch of cute nephews and nieces. She winked at her and strolled towards Yungi after grabbing a towel and water bottle. Wine was the scene unfolding before her eyes. Tia was wiping the sweat off Yungi's face, blabbering something. Yungi was looking everywhere but her. However, his flushed cheeks in- insinuated his inner sentiments. Wine sometimes wonder how these two poles apart persons would stay together. One was utterly calm and reserved person, and other was outspoken and jolly. 
one who spoke less and other who never stopped they were two entirely different personalities however they say opposite makes a perfect pair let's see what destiny holds for yungi and tia wayan wayan's attention shifted to jemin who stood before her she darted a skeptical gaze towards him despite her fervent attempts of not reacting to his proximity a soft rosy hue covered her cheeks yes she tugged a loose wisp of hair behind her ear her shyness was evident as she tucked her head down to avoid his eye contact with him she knew if she looked at his personal magnetic eyes she would be a totally gone case can i have some water he pointed at the water bottle in her hands she wasted no time in handing the water bottle to him twirling opening the cap he chucked down half of it in one go seemed like he was really thirsty you you were amazing today it took every fiber of her body to voice out those words she was shaking internally there was no doubt he was her brother's best friend for years but they didn't interact much few formal greetings and wine ogling on him and that's it so you mean i don't play good at any other day i was amazing only today he remarked paying strict stance she snapped her head towards him her eyes widening in shock and horror as she shook her head vigorously no i didn't mean it that way i mean i she stammered unsure of how to explain her perspective her hands clasped the edge of her sweater as she pondered over the words she was going to utter all her struggle came to an end when he chuckled relax i was just joking his lips twisted into a small smile the smile was more attractive if his eyes were enchanting like moon's reflection in water his smile was a replica of sun as if it was powerful enough to brighten her life with a tiny twitch Wayne felt herself staring at him with hurt in her eyes. One of the team member called for him. Excusing himself, he went towards them, but Wayne's gaze still fixated on him. She peered at him without blinking, lost in her own world where there was only Jemin and Wayne. However, the beautiful moment was ruined by none other than Tia. Girlie, stop staring and go confess your love. Flinching back to reality, Wayne pinned a repointed look. Tia shrugged her shoulder, unaffected by her stern glare on her. What? Don't give me that look. I had been watching you for years. You love him, then what is the issue in confessing? You know you are embarrassing my be- by behaving like a coward. You are my best friend, girlie. At least half of the population of our country should have known your love for him by now. Wayne let out a weary sigh. As Tia went on with her long motivational speech. Today is the right moment. He won the match and he is in a happy mood. Go and seize the opportunity. I advise you to strike the iron when it's hot. She wrapped her arms around Wayne's shoulder, hugging her sideways. Her words put Wayne in a dilemma. Whatever Tia said was right, but what about the insecurities and uncertainties weighing heavy on her heart? I'm telling you Tia there's still time let's go she tugged at Tia's wrist resulting her in getting a glare from her we won't go anywhere today's the day wayan i'm done seeing you being a one-sided lover it's time you get the love back she said her tone serious and full of determination unlike wayan who was literally on the verge of passing out almost whole campus was empty except for the basketball team members who stayed back to discuss about their practice schedule tia being an opportunist took is uh, took it as an auspicious time for wine to confess her love they stood outside the boys changing room waiting for jimmy to come out as he was the only one left he is here she whispered and pushed wine towards him before hiding behind a pillar wine bumped into jimmy and lost her balance but before her butt could kiss the ground jemin held her way supporting her clumsy frame why are you here didn't you leave with yungi he asked as he held her in standing straight as forehead had lines of confusion 
She swallowed nervously, looking everywhere but him. The close proximity made her heart race so wild that she could hear her it thumping in her ears. I I was waiting for my brother, but he already left. She murmured, weaving a quick excuse, but it wasn't a lie. Jimmy nodded in understanding. Her hands clutched the straps of her bag. She could feel Kia's gaze pouring hole in her skull, but she couldn't put herself forward to blurt out her feelings. Come, I'll drop you home. Saying so, he proceeded to walk ahead. Meanwhile, wine froze on her spot. Her eyes went round as she processed the word he uttered. Jimmy glanced at its side. Finding it empty, he looked behind to see Wyan standing at the same place. Why, let's go, he called out, but she didn't move an inch. Sighing out, he approached her and grabbed her wrist. Let's go, he tugged at her hand, guiding her out of there. Wyan's gaze moved to where their hands were connected. The warm touch of his palm against her cold skin sent goosebumps all over her body. Her the hair on her neck stood up in attention as she slid his hand down and intertwined with hers. Her breath became short and rugged as if she had run a marathon. It was too much for her poor heart. Wine and Jamin en route to her home. Wine's nervousness was evident as she kept fit-catting on her seat, rubbing her sweaty palms on her knees time and again. The car smelled like him and it didn't show any mercy on her already worked up state. And if all of that wasn't enough, Kia decided to share her contribution. Few minutes to the journey, she got a text from her. The text was a clear threat that if she didn't confess today, she was going to face her wrath, which Y knew was going to be out and out embarrassing. We are here, he announced, halting the car. Flinching out of her thoughts, she looked outside and the sight of her apartment came in her line of vision. I want to say something. She blurted out, gathering her strength. Jimin hummed, an indication for her to continue. She told with her fingers, feeling his gaze on her. Swallowing the lump formed in her throat, she slowly turned her gaze at his face, locking eyes with him. I, I, she shuddered badly and tore her keys away from his eyes, shifting it to his shoulder. Sucking a deep breath, she encouraged herself to say what she feels. All while, Jimin patiently awaited her to speak. I, I really like you for a long time now. Her voice turned into a whisper at the end. It was a simple confession, not a proposal. She expressed her feelings without the condition to know how he feels about her. A thick silence hung heavy in the air as an aftermath of her confession. Only the soft whisper of their breathing and the humming of air against the glass can be heard. With each approaching second in silence, Wyan felt her heartbeat going loud and fast. Never in her life ever she felt the silence so deafening. Why and I, he trailed off, his voice insinuating astonishment. He bit his lower lip, lost at words. Her unexpected confession left him shocked and tongue-tied. I'm sorry, Wyan, he commenced after a brief pause. His apology gave her answer. Her heart, which was going insane, gracefully caught his pace before beating more slower than the normal. Slow to the extent that she couldn't comprehend if it was beating or not. I have always seen you as my best friend's little sister, nothing more. I am sorry. He felt guilt rushing through his veins, getting the sight of her fallen face. The colors from her face drained away. Jimmy knew she was trying to hold back her tears. By the way, she was gulping again and again. Don't apologize, it's okay. She forced out a smile and hastily go down the car before he could say something. As she said, stepped down the car, tears slipped down her eyes. She always dreamt about him being her partner. Never she had ever thought about getting rejected. 
Now that it actually happened, it hurted her like hell. Why and groan and press a, a pillow on her ear as the doorbell sound hit her ears. Getting annoyed by its continuous ringing, she threw the blanket aside and sat up. Her eyes travelled to the alarm clock which showed seven in the morning. She sighed and rose from the bed. Her eyes unconsciously moved to the mirror and took in her reflection. Massy hair, bloodshot swollen eyes, dark circles under her eyes and chubby face. She was standing up the every trait of a heartbroken person who got rejected by her crush. After his rejection the day before the evening, she locked herself in her room and cried her heart out. She sighed, looking at her vulnerable state. However, her sad thoughts once again interrupted by the doorbell. Huffing out in frustration, she exited her room, already knowing who could be at the door early morning. What are you doing here? Why asked as soon as she opened the door. Well, hello to you too, girlie. She gave a tight little smile to Why. Why not her eyes and open the door wider? No, no, I am not coming inside. Take care of him for today. I have some work. She pushed a tall boy towards Wyan, whom she hadn't noticed yet. Babysit my cousin for today. If he annoys you, give him food. Saying so, she turned on her heels and ran back to her car before driving away. Wyan blinked her eyes in disbelief. Tia's antics left her stunned. She looked at the boy who grinned and waved at her. Jungkook? She whispered, unsure of his name. I'm glad you remember me. Let's go inside. He walked inside as if he owns the house, giving yet another shock to Wyan. Both cousins are same. She murmured and walked inside, closing the door behind. You are all grown up. I don't understand why do you need a babysitter? She said, sitting beside him who was pulling out different board games from his bag. I don't understand either, but it it's good. At least I get a partner to play games with. He arranged the games in a row and looked at Wyan. Which one? He asked with a smile. Wyan was about to deny, but chose otherwise. It would be better to play games than thinking about his rejection and bowling her eyes out. Jess, let me bring some snacks. She made her way to the kitchen while Jungkook engaged himself in arranging the chosen game. You cheat. She glared at him and smacked his head. Jungkook whined with a pout and rubbed his head. Nuna, let me win one game at least or I am going to cry. His lower lip wobbled. His eyes sparkled with the sheen of tears. He hated losing and here Wine being a pro in board games didn't let him win for once. Wanna eat something? She asked with an intention of diverting his mind and it worked. His eyes lit up. The sadness from earlier cried in the corner as he smiled widely and nodded his head. You are so cute. Wish I had a younger brother. She chuckled, ruffling his hair. He smiled shyly and covered his ears, which had turned red by now. She didn't know when the whole day passed playing games with him. Indeed, it distracted her from all those heartbreaking thoughts. However, their interaction was interrupted by someone clearing their throat. Wyan looked up and found Yungi along with Jemin. Wyan looked away as soon as her eyes met Jemin's. Who is he? He pointed at Jungkook, who was rabazing through the games to select the next one. Wyan stole a quick glance at Jamin, who somewhat looked annoyed by Jungkook's presence. My date. She didn't know what made her lie. Was it for getting a reaction out of Jamin or for indirectly telling him that she was over him? Her eyes were at Yungi, but she felt Jamin's hard glare on her. What's up with this boy? Didn't he say he didn't have any feelings for her? Then why was he looking ready to kill anyone at that moment? Yes, I am. He looked at them and smiled before reverting his focus back on the games. Wine gazed at him in amusement. Honestly, she didn't expect him to play along. 
sweetheart, let's go to your room. She gasped at his nickname, shocked by his sudden change in demeanor. Few moments ago, he was acting like a kid, ready to cry over a game, and suddenly he turned into a man. Why nodded and led the way to her room with Jungkook following closely behind, carrying his stuff. Let's go, he said to Jimin, whose eyes were stuck at Wine and Jungkook. Let's go, Park Jimin, he reiterated after getting no response from him. Jimin nodded and followed Yoongi to his room, though he looked unbothered, but deep down he was restless by this deep thing. Did she already get over him? This thought clouded his mind. Wine was preparing noodles for Jungkook. She shook her head, remembering he asked for it as a compensation for playing along. As she put the noodles in the boiling water, she felt a presence behind her. She stiffened as the familiar fragrance hit her nostrils. She felt him standing behind her. You moved on quite fast, he whispered near her ear. He grabbed her arm and twirled her around. A breathy gasp escaped her lips due to the sudden force. Twenty-four. Twenty-four hours ago you confessed you like me and suddenly you have a date. That too at home, alone. He looked pissed off. His clenched jaw and raised filled eyes said it all. Why and girl were dancing his furious state. He looked scary. Tell him to leave. Immediately. It came out as an undeniable demand. I, I won't. Wine felt a sudden confidence rushing through her veins. She stared directly at his eyes. He won't leave, and it shouldn't bother you who I date. He rejected me. Though Wine shouldn't be blaming him, but she felt like venting it out. Her breathing quickened when he leaned down to her face. She squeezed her eyes shut at it as an instinct. His warm breath hit on her soft lips, resulting her parting them in anticipation. Tell him to leave, princess, a whisper, nuzzling his nose on her cheek. Wine's hands clutched at the marble counter behind. Will you be my good girl and tell him to leave? He trailed his nose from her cheek to all the way down to her collarbone, tracing the edge of her clavicle and nestling his face in the crook of her neck. Inhaling her fragrance, he never liked raspberries, but wine was exception. Will you do it, sweetheart? He hung for an answer. His hand snaked round her waist, pulling her closer. Their fronts collided. He struggled to invade between their tangled bodies. Wine panted. His actions sent a chill down her spine. Her body heated up, cheeks turning into the darkest shade of red. Her heart beat accelerated to the extent that she feared her heart will rip out of her chest. She unconsciously nodded, bringing a smile on Jimmy's lips. He parted away from her and smirked at her flustered steep. Sensing the absence of his body warmth, he opened her eyes and the sight of smirking Jimmy blessed her vision. Good girl. He tapped her cheek slightly. You, you cheated. She murmured, avoiding his teasing gaze. He reached his eyebrows, a look of amusement taking over his features. Did I? But what did I do? I was just talking. His smirk widened as she turned around. Transferring the now-cooked noodles in a bowl, she stormed out of the kitchen, leaving him chuckling behind. You are leaving? She asked, observing him packing his stuff. Yes, Tia Nuna is here. He hung his belt on his shoulders and walked over to her. Wrapping his arms around her shoulder, he hugged her sideways. I had a great time with you. I'll come again. Wyatt smiled and ruffled his hair. There was no doubt he gives a good company. I'll take this. Nuna will return it tomorrow. She snatched the bowl of noodles from Wyatt and moved towards the door. Wine shook her head and followed him to see him off. Wine entered inside her bedroom after seeing him off. Locking the door behind, she turned around and flinched, finding Jimin lying on her bed. 
with hands were tucked behind his head, legs tangled together, a victorious smile dancing on his lips, and his eyes were stuck at her. Good girl, he jumped off the bed and strode towards her. Within a blink of eye, wine was pinned to the door behind. Now listen, there won't be any date or any boy around you from now on. Possessiveness was dripping down his tone as his eyes stared right through her soul. Wine scoffed and placed her hands on his chest, pushing him away, but he didn't buzz. Why wouldn't be any boy around me? Why wouldn't I date anyone? I can't stay single whole life. She glared at him, her face crippled with frustration. Who is telling me to stay single? Date me. I'll be your boyfriend. He pressed one palm on, on the door beside her head. Nice joke. Someone said, I only see you as my best friend's little sister. Nothing more. She moved and rolled her eyes. I love you, sweetheart. I said it intentionally. I want to propose you first, and I had been preparing it for months. Your sudden confession shocked me. She so wanted to hug you tight and tell you I feel the same. But then my plans would have ruined. I am sorry and I love you. He confessed, his eyes showing his sincerity. His confession left her in utter shock. She stared at him with open mouth. Why didn't you tell me then? I cried so much, you handsome idiot. She smacked his chest, earning a chuckle from him. Well, I did now, and I'm sorry I made you cry. He slid his hands on her waist and pulled her closer. What about your plans now? Plans can wait, but I can't, especially when a bunch of worms are eyeing my flower. Tell that guy to never come back again. I was burning in jealousy. You don't know how I control myself from choking him then and there. He complained with a pout. Wine burst into fits of giggles. Let's sleep. He carried her to the bed, laid her down and climbed beside her. Aren't you going home? She asked and exhaled deeply when he pulled her head on his chest. I'm staying over and don't worry about your brother. He knows about us. He clarified her unspoken doubt. She sighed and relaxed in his arms. His warmth provided her the needed comfort after a long, tiring day. In no time, she fell asleep. Jamal stared at her with a smile plastered on his face until sleep claimed her senses. Wan and Jamal ascended the stairs, rubbing their eyes. The commotion in the living room disturbed their sleep, which led them here, finding the cause of it. They halted on the stairs, watching the scene unfolding before their eyes. The whole living room was decorated with white and red flowers. The floor was filled with the balloons. The sweet fragrance of lavender lingered in the air. Amidst the decoration stood Tia and Yungi. Tia was on her knees holding a heart-shaped red balloon. Yungi was barely opening his eyes as if he was forcefully dragged out of his bed. Say yes, Min Yungi. How long are you going to make me run behind you? She pinched his thigh. He winced and stared down at her. Come here. He extended his hand towards her. She squealed and put her palm on his. He tugged at it and pulled her in his arms. I surrender. He smashed his lips on her, sucking the life out of her. She responded with the same passion and wrapped her arms around his neck, pulling him more closer. Yungi swiftly picked her up, her legs wrapped around his torso and made his way towards the stairs where stood two persons with wide eyes and open mouth. He walked past them, totally unbothered about them with dressing their make out. Wine and Jamin stared at them until they disappeared inside the room. Damn, my brother, he's wild, she murmured, still in shock. I'm going to kill your best friend, I swear. This, all of this is how I plan to propose you. Now I, have, now I have to restart everything from beginning. He eyed the decoration, a skull taking over his features. It's okay. Let's go and sleep, if we get any. She pulled him towards her room.
in the end it's not jamin o1 it's jamin and one just like yungi and tia